The 1850s was a time of economic, social, and political upheaval, and it saw the destruction of America's second party system. Since the 1830s, the two major political parties duking it out at the ballot box was the Whigs and the Democrats. Both sides contributed presidents, senators, and congressmen, along with a host of other lesser political positions. But in the 1850s, the Whigs would find themselves floundering and watching two other political parties emerge to tackle the Democrats in elections. This is the story of the lesser-known Know-Nothings. Welcome everyone to Half History Will Travel. I am your host, the Wilder Historian, and today I bring you the story of a short-lived but extremely important political party that would help forge the party system of Democrats versus Republicans that we still have today. The American economy drastically changed in the 1850s with the introduction of the railroad. Its significance to American history cannot be denied, and it had a major role in the reorganization of political parties in that decade. Although you might think that railroads brought prosperity to American cities, for the middle and lower class, the day-to-day -day grind became a test of survival. The 49ers who traveled to California in the late 1840s sent back gold by rail, and that gold began circulating in the American economy, and like anything, if there's more of it, the item depreciates. Thus, inflation ran rampant, and Americans found that their money was worth less, and it became a struggle to buy the necessary goods for your life. It didn't help that rates for various types of freight carried by the railroad raised the prices of commonly bought goods. Railroads did not only bring in gold, but it brought in people to cities. Many of those people were immigrants, and to be more specific, Catholic immigrants many of them coming from Ireland. The introduction of different peoples into different social structures began to spread anxiety throughout the residents of the city. Many immigrants worked for less or would be paid less by employers, which put many Americans out of a job just as the American economy began to fall into a slump. Additionally, the growth of populations in cities brought about the demand for more infrastructure to accommodate its growth. This in turn demanded more taxes from the city's residents, which only compounded the financial crisis Americans were facing. Possibly, it was the cities and towns who were bypassed by the railroad that fared worse. Without railroad tracks bringing in people and commerce, small towns withered and some died, displacing the people of those towns into other areas to find work. Before the railroad, Water transport and transport by wagons demanded warehouses, dock workers, teamsters, rivermen, and common laborers to transfer goods to different types of transportation. Many times the railroads hindered that process or did away with those modes of transportation in some areas. Being able to transport goods by rail over long distances quickly created overwhelming competition for local merchants and shippers who previously didn't have to compete with larger eastern cities. One example is the iron industry. Before the railroads, local furnaces produced pig iron and shipped it to local blacksmiths to work it into usable goods like nails, hammers, and other tools. But now, the railroad allowed for the mass transportation of iron from larger furnaces. As urbanization took over many cities in the Northeast and along major railroads in the Midwest, factories sprang up demanding unskilled laborers, and many immigrants fit that description. They produced goods cheaper, which made artisans lower their prices, but many could not compete and folded. This financial crisis experienced by Americans in northern cities created a cry for help from politicians to help them economically and fight back against immigration, which many of these Americans saw as the ultimate problem. A Catholic conspiracy frequently headlined newspapers and became the talk of the town about how Catholics would overwhelm Protestants in the United States and allow the Pope and the Vatican to take over. Since the 1830s, the Americans concerned with that problem had threw their lot in with the Whigs. Whigs fought against immigration. They supported temperance, or the outlaw of alcohol, which would attack Catholics because they used wine in communion. Whigs believed in reforming society by imposing laws against actions that would defile or corrupt society. Democrats also believed in reform, but it was individual reform. For example, they did not condone drunkenness, but did not believe in imposing a law for everyone against alcohol. They believed in individual reform, where it was up to the individual themselves to overcome their drunkenness, not the government's. 
This placed immigrants firmly on the side of Democrats because their ideas about individualism allowed for a more inclusive society. As immigrants came into the United States, they voted Democrat, which threatened Whig political power. However, by the 1850s, the Whig party was seeking immigrant votes, and that alienated many of their constituency. And so began the creation of the Know Nothing Party, starting out as a secret group where its members, if asked about it, would say, I know nothing. Their formal name was the American Party. It met with great success in major northeastern cities and many in the Midwest with high immigrant populations. The nativist secret society had developed into a successful anti-Catholic and anti-immigrant political party. Although it was not a national powerhouse, local governments fell firmly in the hands of know-nothings. The election of 1852 resulted not only in a Whig loss, but in its dismantling. The Whig candidate, General Winfield Scott, alienated the nativist wing of the Whig party with his past leniency against Catholic churches in Mexico during the Mexican-American War, the fact that he had daughters educated in a convent, and his party's effort to get Catholic votes. Whigs left the party in droves and streamed toward know-nothings. The rank and file of the Whig party had lost all patience in hoping that the establishment politicians would help them in their economic and social crisis. They felt like the Whig politicians that they had voted for did not care about their needs. Career politicians had dominated conventions and kept younger and newer politicians from joining the congressional ranks. Therefore, the nativist wing of the Whig party separated itself from the politicians who were neglecting their constituency. The Know Nothing movement solidly ripped apart the Whigs. In 82 races for the House of Representatives in 1854, the Know Nothing or American Party ran 76 candidates, 35 of whom won. It had quickly became a heavy hitter on the American political scene. However, there would be another party that would dismantle the Whigs. That would be the Republican Party. The Whigs possessed two groups of people, those who thought immigration was the biggest threat to the United States, and those who thought slavery was the biggest threat. Republicans represented the anti-slavery group. Although the Know Nothings had a quick rise, they also had a quick fall. In the 1856 elections, Republicans made deals to help support Know Nothings locally if they voted for Republicans at the presidential level. The presidential candidate for the Republican Party was John C. Fremont, who was a young man not associated with the establishment. The young candidate won an incredible amount of votes for the first time that his party put up a presidential candidate but the winner would be the Democratic candidate, James Buchanan. Ultimately, sectionalism and the disdain for pro-slavery Southerners would send Northern Democrats and know-nothings to the Republican Party. Northern Democrats would most likely not have joined their old rivals, the Whigs, but the new Republican Party allowed them to fight back against pro-slavery bullying in the House and the Senate and allow for the Republican domination of Northern states in the 1860 election. The downfall of the Whig Party would ultimately lead to the formation of the Republican Party, drawn on voters and politicians from the Know Nothings and Northern Democrats. Although the Know Nothings have nearly been forgotten by much of the general public, its importance to the coming of the Civil War and the formation of the political system we have today cannot be denied. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.